It's kind of a giveaway that I did these two videos back to back because uh, I look the same. I should go change my shirt, <laughs> change my hat, right? Um, but, nah, I'll just roll with it. Right, so still in step one, class video four. This one's going to be shorter, I promise. And um, I have one more. Putting four and five together would have made it really long. And I, again, like I said in the beginning, I try to make these around 30 minutes. The first few are longer just because there's so much tech time, so much to cover. But I think that's uh, well worth it uh, down the road. So let's knock that out right off the bat for uh, video four. Still that first step, right? Getting off to a good start. But let's knock out the tech time piece. So I mentioned last video that the school offers, really through Microsoft offers, a uh, copy of Office 365. In fact, five free downloads. So where does that exist? Let's knock that out first. <clears throat> Homepage. You can hunt around for a week probably and not find it. But let's try the search up here in the top, that search function, and type in free Office 365. There's a couple things I want to uh, show you here and hit search. When you get the results, one of the things to, to notice is the first few results, almost just like Google, really, is you're going to get ads. So see how these say ad, ad visit website. So scroll down a little ways and you'll get into the search as far as from the school, the website itself. So there we are. Office 365 GNTC, click, and it tells you what it is, some frequently asked questions, uh, what it includes, which is stuff that works on Mac and iPads, etc., etc. so it's pretty good. And A students, to get your copy of Office, follow these simple steps. Get Office 365, and there's a note, you must log in with your student email. That's what tells the provider that you're a student thus you get the free version so let's just see what that page looks like there it is office 365 education and there's really all you need is that school email address to get started okay Ooh, I got a visitor I'm actually watching my my son's dog him and his wife are out of town yeah he's huge too hey hey no barking come here come here Demi see if I can get him on camera for a second. I'm wasting time. Dimmy, come here. Come here. There he is. This dog's got a bark that'll scare the soul out of you. He's super friendly, but man, it sounds like the end of the world when he barks. We'll see if he does. Anyhow, back to the task at hand. So you go through that, get started, and it'll uh, step you through the download process, how to get that free. And I, I want to say it's five um, copies, okay? So that was step one of tech time. Let's keep driving. The discussion board. I wanted to just step through this one more time. I did it in, I think, the first video. Um, in the Blackboard, let's do the whole process. I'll go back. Click on our class once you're logged in. And then under lessons, I didn't make a discussion board tab over here because I think it can, can get confusing. I want to put the discussion boards under the given week. So again, under the lessons where most everything resides, there's nothing for week one. So we're in week two, step one. And you saw in one of the videos, I got that fouled up. So you're not alone. And just scroll down. Right? We looked at the Y College Worksheet last video. Here's your online learning discussion board. So again, underlined, it turns into the finger. It's a link. You can copy and paste that into your answer and then just go back and start answering them. And that's an easy way to make sure you don't miss any. Here, we'll do that. Do, 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 do. Copy, Let's see if it works. And again, I started, I've already got one there just to build on. And look, I pasted it in uh, to mine, so I could do that. But let's go ahead and just do a reply and see if this works. I hope it will. I hate bad demos. There it is. I copy and I paste it in. Now, in my reply, I can start typing in my answer. And I'm being a smart aleck here, nothing. There's obviously things positive about online learning, but you could go through, one, that's a bad answer because it's wrong and it's short. So again, robust answers. But you step through, finish all of those. And again, at the top, feel free to add your experiences with, nice typo, gotta fix that too, right? 
And if I posted that, if I submit it, it would fall in under this first one. So there's the discussion board. Uh, let's see, what more tech time? There, there's not a lot. Email and Blackboard. Good. I put these in there so I don't forget. So we're in Blackboard, right? And uh, wouldn't you know? I have to add it. I thought it was already in here. It's not. Um, all right, bear with me. I'm just going to do it on the fly. <laughs> Watch the magic happen. And I'll move it around here in a minute. You can, now it uses the same system as the, oh, the GNTC email, the Outlook system. But you can email me, you can email other people in the class if there's a need for that. So what I tend to use is I go down here, single select users. And what you'll see is there's me at the top. It just falls in alphabetically. I'm not automatically at the top, but all the rest of our classmates are in there. So if I need uh, to email me, click on it. Now here's what people screw up. you got to move me over into the selected box. So you see a little arrow? Dink. Now I'm there. Now it's going to send it to me. And now it's like any other email. What's the subject? What's on your mind? And if you need to attach something like a worksheet, let's say, you just like any email, just got to scroll down a little bit, attach a file, browse, and let's go to the desktop. And remember we have a College Success, College 1500 folder. There's my Y College worksheet that I filled out with gibberies. Just double click on it and look, it's attached. And then I hit submit and it'll send it to me. So there is a way to email in Blackboard. Okay? And it's it's somewhat useful, I suppose. Uh, and let's see, prereqs, last one. I'm trying to get through tech time under 10 minutes for once. Um, last one. It says on here, and I'm going to use this because it's a little bit longer. AC13 is the Associate's Degree in Accounting. All right? So I've already gone, let's step through just for the heck of it back to the home page. If you click on this logo, it'll take you back to the home page. And then we went academics, programs of study, and that was AC 13. So there it is, accounting associate degree, click. All the advisors, right? Remember, if you click on the advisor's name, it'll show you where they live, their phone number, their email, and online, any of them will help, okay? Program description, basic uh, what we call, you know, general education, gen ed courses. Three credit hours is a typical one classroom. And then some of the, the um, classes you have to take. So this is an or, not and. you got to take one of these. But here's what I mean by elective. Something you have to take first before you can take the next one. So accounting 1100, financial accounting 1. You have to have that one done before... My GNTC or your advisor is going to let you sign up for a financial accounting too because they build on each other. And the same would apply if you have to take remedial uh, math, remedial algebra before you can take college algebra. That's what a prerequisite is. You got to do this before you can do that. Simple as that. And that's a good uh, example of. Okay. I think that's it. Good. So we're moving on. So the last thing I talked about that I put off, let me make sure on my notes. Discussion, yes, free office, Blackboard, prereqs, the spider chart. That was the last one. This comes from outlining, and it starts in the middle. And what I, the reason I put this out there is, look, if you're taking three, four, five classes and you got a job and you got two kids, your plate's overflowing. So there's ways to get the information you need for the class read it before the class itself, but to do that and not take six hours, okay? Now, I'm not saying if you've got the time, read every word, make notes, do, you know, do as much as you can, but when time is compressed, and some point it will be, I like to do this. So the title of the chapter, Getting Off to a Good Start. In a paper, we know that is the thesis. It's the overall point of the chapter or the paper. So I know that by reading step one, getting off to a good start. Know yourself, know your college. Okay, that doesn't help a lot, but it gives me a little bit of focus. Now what I do is you go through the chapters, and especially in a classic textbook, you'll see things like this. If there are 
keywords, if there's a glossary, if there's words in the chapter that are bolded, that means it's important. It's kind of like my words of the day in the videos. Um, that these are concepts that one will be on the quiz no doubt and two inform the whole rest of if not the chapter the entire course okay um, that second bullet not the case because this online textbook doesn't have um, the additional like a glossary that I can pull out not yet we're working on it so but there's bolded words there's key concepts okay? what else if there's a picture Beyond just the you know aesthetics of those wet stones, things that can get in your way, the steps. Um, if there's like in history classes a timeline or a picture of the battle, um, a map, those things, books cost money, and if the authors are going to put that in there, that that tells you they think it's important. So look for those. Right? Remember the little pyramid chart of how we see the world, what goes into our worldview. That's worth something. That's worth taking a note of. Um, the main paragraphs, the sections of chapter one. Now, the history of GNTC, probably not going to see a quiz question on that. Hint, hint. But some of the other ones, you are. So look at, try to develop that skill of what's important. Tangent. Early college students oftentimes will feel like they have to memorize every single word, and pretty soon their head explodes. So what you want to do is figure out what those key ideas are, and that's where this can be helpful, and that's where my words of the day, or things I talk about over and over again, like being proactive, like objectivity, you know those are important. So keep a focus on those. Don't try to memorize everything. You can't do it. And is there a summary? Sometimes um, there's textbooks, and when I did my doctorate, you know, it was a stack this high every semester. And I hope my, <laughs> I've got it now, they can't take it away, right? But uh, look, my advisor knew this. If there was a summary at the end of a 178 page chapter, and it was three paragraphs long that summarized the main ideas of what they were talking about, you know what I was reading? Now, if I had the time, I'd go into that chapter itself. But push come to shove and time was short, and I had to get something done. If there's a summary, man, use that and that's kind of where the main paragraphs an intro and a concluding paragraph those usually introduce the key ideas and sum up the key ideas so that's your spider chart you can use it for outlining key ideas in a, a paper and that's what this would be the thesis what am i writing about and my main ideas one two three maybe four and then supporting information for skimming a chapter this works All right quotes right this is the typical format of the class talking about student success I got it right um, success is the buildup of many things over time you know you look at people and we'll talk more about this down the road this overnight success idea don't believe it they put in a lot of the time and effort before they became famous for whatever it is and those small day-to-day -day working hard repeated day in and day out is what brought them to that level of success it doesn't just happen, it's planned for. And you know what? Planning for something means you're being proactive about it. Very few people just stumble into something, right? Yeah, you could win the lottery. <laughs> Look at what happens to most people when they win the lottery, their life falls apart. Without goals and plans to reach them, you're a ship without a rudder, right? You're a ship with no destination. So have goals, absolutely. And I hope one of your goals, short term, is to get through the first week of school then the second, then the semester, longer term, graduation, even longer term, career. Where do I want to go? What do I want to do and how can it affect people? Okay. So we want that and we want to connect those goals. And small day-by-day -day goals, those small efforts, get you to your destination. Yeah, it may seem like it's forever. It's not. Two years from now, if you stick to your plan and you graduate, there's going to be some times in there where you're like, man, I just don't feel like doing this. But when you get to the finish line, if you keep that goal in mind, that's one of the keys to motivation. If you lose sight of your goals or they're half-hearted, that's where motivation can drop. Okay? If you don't have a plan, you're going to become part of somebody else's. And guess what? They really don't care what your plan is. They want you for the, what it can do for them. So I have a plan. And stick up for yourself. Push, come to shove boss asks you to do something unethical mm -mm. 
Know what you stand for. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah, there it is. There's one of mine. And my head is in the way. Mm -hmm. And I believe this. We are, wherever you are right now watching this video sitting there, your existence in that place in time is made up of what you decided before. Everything, decisions, things you've done in life brought you to this point. And it'll keep going that way. So the decisions we make bring us to where we are in life and we'll continue to do so. All right, not too many words of the day, and um, I'm going to have you guys do some of this as a mental exercise. I'll give a little bit of a pause, but then, you know, give you my side of it. There's some words. Dependence. Can you think of a time when you were utterly and totally dependent on someone else? Then most people would say, and I agree with it, when you're a baby, right, without parents assistance without someone taking care of you you can't survive so there's nothing wrong with that but we don't want to be in that state as much as possible right I can depend on people I depend on you to get your work done things like that but not total utter dependence on somebody else so that's an example right some can be positive some can be negative there's another dependence when it comes to addiction and I think that's in the very last video that uh, I'll do shortly um, that's obviously a negative uh, example of dependence. Then there's independence. Woohoo, right? Fourth of July, America. Um, by the way, the Declaration of Independence did nothing to get us independent from England beyond put a mark on the wall. We didn't get independence until we won the uh, Revolutionary War. Right? Independence, what does that mean? Well, I'm not totally dependent like a baby, so I'm not subject to control. Now, look, people. I don't want to go off on a soapbox, but freedom and independence doesn't mean you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. There are limitations. Look at freedom of speech, the First Amendment. I can't say anything. I can't yell fire in a crowded theater and endanger public safety. Hmm, interesting. Is that a positive or a negative? Generally, we think of it as a positive, but it can be overblown. And I would say looking around in the news today, I've seen some negative examples. People mistake freedom for I don't know, not giving a, a, a hoot about their neighbor. And then interdependence. Think about, you know, interstate. Interstate 75, what does that mean? Well, it means it goes through more than one state. It connects them. So interdependence, what is that? That can be a great thing. If I'm running a business, or you are, and I work for you, and you have 10 employees, and we've got a problem. Man, how are we going to fix this? We keep everything shipped out and it's getting there late. You put 10 brains together, I guarantee you're going to come up with a better solution than just having one person think about it. Two or more people. Two or more people working together. Now look, work relationships can be toxic. Where the boss only listens because his idea is the only one that counts to himself. Don't do that. Interdependence, right? The idea of diversity. Um having people from different backgrounds. Again, we all see the world differently, that pyramid. Um, if I bring in some ideas from younger women, younger men, older women, whatever it is, different different um, ethnic backgrounds, different racial backgrounds, I get some ideas that I, a 57-year-old white dude, might not have thought of. In fact, I, I'm sure I will, because we all see the world differently. Companies that are the, the best that work together the most and are most successful do this and they value other people's opinions yeah. think of some more positives and negatives there's plenty out there so dependence independence interdependence so let me ask you a question and I'm going to pause here for just a second to let you think about it if I asked you to just what's the answer here it's a multiple choice violent crime in America increasing steady decreasing and I'm talking overall from like let's say 1970 to today is violent crime in America getting worse is it going down when I do this in class the answer I get 99 percent of the time is it's increasing and not just increasing but dramatically increasing and a few people will say ah, I think it's staying about the same
Here's something I want you to start doing. When you see a chart, look what it's telling you. So look at the X and Y axes, right? What are these numbers? What do they mean? Obviously the dates, that's simple. This is violent crime rate. What does that mean? Number of victims per 1,000. So number of victims per every thousand people. So that gives you this, basically a percentage, a number, right? Where did the information come from? That's the other piece I want you to look at. Source, Bureau of Justice. Hmm, I tend to think that's a very credible source for this information. It's not some bonehead making it up. And look at the chart. It's decreasing. It's dramatically decreasing. And here's a little bit more, right? Because that one ends, oops, basically in 2010. So I pulled up, and again, some of these take time to document and quantify and get the data out. But you can see, yes, honestly, there's been a slight uptick, and there probably will continue to be. As we saw coming out of COVID, people kind of went nutso for a little while. But in general, with the context, and this goes from 1990, you can see it dropping off dramatically. So that begs the question, with my head in the way, why do we get this answer wrong? And I'm not joking, 95, 99, sometimes 100% of the class will say it's going up. Why do we get this wrong? Think about what we're surrounded by. What do you see on the news? The news is, <laughs> again, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but if you watch the news, it's like, this will kill you, that'll kill you. I mean, last night, right, we got a hurricane going to Long Island. You can tell I'm doing this in August. Um, fires out west, COVID vaccine, Afghanistan, yada, yada, yada. Everything's bad. And because it gets people's attention, man. Fires and flashing lights and people screaming. People watch that. That's how the news makes their money, through advertising. And they usually end with, I call it puppies and unicorns, some kind of feel-good story. Probably so we don't all go out and kill ourselves because the news is so bad. Now, sometimes there is bad news, but just give me the facts. I don't need the emotional baggage that goes with it. All right, that was a little bit of a rant, right? Did you look at what the numbers are and what the source was while I was ranting? Again, it's a population percentage, um, years, obviously. Source, FBI, probably credible. So why is this important? Why did I mention in the last video proactive and objective? Okay, this time instead of the underlying links to Dead Poet Society, I hope you watch the videos. These are blue stars, and it's the same thing. If you see a blue star, look, nee, 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 the finger, and it takes you to a video. Um, I try to warn you. I don't use videos with a lot of bad language, but on very few occasions, and I'll put something on there so in case juniors watching over your shoulder you don't play it while he's around but uh, that video um, it'll make more sense this this topic if you watch it if I plan ahead can I better manage my time and get better results hmm probably if I better manage my time I can spend more time on things maybe I can get more done in a day maybe I can focus on those important things for a longer period instead of slapping it together and throwing it in if I can see the world objectively, what do we say the synonym was? Factual. I can determine better fact from fiction and make better informed decisions. That's why I tell new students, watch the news. Look, I know the news is, I just said how bad it was, but I want to be informed. And I'll tell you, I don't watch any of the 24 hour news sources because they're more entertainment. If you ask me, that's my opinion um, and bad entertainment. I like personally, fact check the website that I showed you guys last video. I do watch the PBS News Hour because they don't try to compress everything into 22 minutes with commercials. And they actually use a conservative and a liberal on a subject and they'll sit and they'll talk. And they may disagree, but they're not screaming at each other. And then occasionally I'll look at the BBC World News, the, the news from England, just to get kind of an outsider's view of what's going on in the US. I can make better informed decisions. So I plan ahead, have more time, I can be more objective. Absolutely. So that's what's in this video. There, There's a couple bad-ish words. It's from a, t, uh, a TV show, I think it was on HBO. It's not on anymore. 
Uh, it was called the Newsroom. But it had some provocative ideas. Not provocative like, uh, make people scream, but to think about. And it's the idealist versus the realist. The boss, when you watch this, is the woman and the newscaster. Her subordinate is the guy. And you'll probably recognize him, Jeff Daniels. He's a famous actor. But it's interesting, their discussion. And I hope you guys pull something. There's one sentence in there that just, it, every time I listen to it, I'm like, wow. That was, that was substantial. That was important. See if you can find one that really jumps out at you. Maybe use it in one of the discussion boards or in the chat. Okay? That's why those things are important. And here's another one. And I'm an equal opportunity offender. So you'll notice I pick on Republicans and Democrats alike. Um... These are links to other sources, the first one being a Washington Post article. And again, to get to it, if I, if I embed it, I'll get a copyright violation. So you go do it yourself if you're interested. But the Washington Post started at inauguration and compiled all the falsehoods that Donald Trump put forward. Okay. Is he alone? No, I just went and looked to fact check this morning and they dissected um, what President Biden has said about Afghanistan, most of it was either the truth stretched to the extreme or outright false. Okay? So that's why I think it's important. And it's not on one party or the other. It's on both. And not all politicians are crooked, but it seems like more and more they rely on repetition, not fact. Okay? All right, rant over. I probably have offended everybody at this point. That wasn't my intent, but that's how I think. That's how I feel about it. So, oh, that blue star under Joe Biden takes you to a specific fact check page about the statements. And the beauty of it is it explains why. Not just saying, ah, that's a bunch of BS. They explain why. Okay, getting to the end. Freedom and freedom of the press. It's no surprise the founders put freedom of the press in the Constitution because free press and freedom go hand in hand. So this is a uh, visualization, it's a little bit dated, but it's still good, of countries where there's a good relationship, a free press and a free, informed, actually democratic um, republic or a democratic country. And you can see there's not a lot in the green. We're in the satisfactory as is Canada, Australia, but as you get deeper into the oranges, the reds, the blacks, you can see where those countries reside. This is Russia. I'm going to take a guess. That's China. And then you get into Middle Eastern countries like Iran, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, uh, Somalia. So I wouldn't put these up as pinnacles of we want to be like you. I think the greens and yellows. And there's a reason that's the case is because the freedom of the press and the freedom of the people are tied together. This link takes you to an article from the uh, United Kingdom from England about Facebook and fake accounts. And look, I guarantee a lot of what's spinning around the, uh, the social media at this point is done by bots from either China or Russia just to sow further discontent about vaccinations in America. But people have no media literacy to see through it. Hmm. Seems like that was a question somewhere along the way for you guys. What is media literacy? We'll come back to that idea too. Okay. So here's the thought. And if you watch the uh, idealist versus the realist, why college? And this may help you with the worksheet. I don't want to see this verbatim, but why? And she mentioned to talk truth to stupid. Because there's a lot of stupid out there. And I don't mean that to be ugly, but to be informed. So that when you hear something that's utter bunk, you go, mm-hmm, yeah, right. And you don't continue to listen from that source. And please, please don't get your news from Facebook or Reddit. To see through that spin and to think and act objectively. To make those best possible decisions based on all the facts. I can never gather every single fact that I need, but I can gather enough to make a decision and be comfortable with it. We said in the military, we'd never launch a mission if we waited to get perfect intel. Because it never happens. There's always new information coming in. But you made a decision, yes, I've got enough intelligence to take off and fly this mission. Kind of the same idea.
Now that wasn't so bad. Look, I'm under the 30 minute mark this time, and the next one will be the same. So yes, quite a few videos in the step one, week two, step one, um, but almost to the finish line here, right? And give me some feedback on these. Look, it, I know sometimes I go off on a rant. That part of it's being an old guy, I guess. Um, I am never ever going to try to force my opinion on you guys. Uh, most of you, I suspect, are old enough to vote. If you're not registered, get registered. And then go vote. And I don't care who you vote for. Vote for who you think the best candidate is. Be informed, be objective, and vote. Right? I'll never tell you who to vote for. All right. Let's end a, a smiley face. Let's end on something happy. Hey. All right. I'll see you next video.